Hello, once again, Kenny Jacobs from Bloomington, Illinois. I'm a PGA teaching professional, and my videos talk both about the great game of golf, as well as being a Christian and living in the last days. Well, here we are on one of the coldest nights of the year, and my power has gone out, so I'm hoping uh, it comes back on here pretty soon so it doesn't get too cold. But while I'm sitting here in the dark, I figured, why not shoot a video? So, here we go. Let's talk a little bit about golf swings that are too steep or choppy, um, which causes you to slice the golf ball to the right or hit a lot of popped up tee shots. A lot of people uh, think that their driver has too much loft on it because they hit it too high. A lot of times they're hitting it too high, not necessarily because it has too much loft. And in a lot of cases, they have too little loft. And so they're working too hard to hit the ball in the air. And so they chop down at it and they, and they go underneath the ball and pop it up. A good golf swing is one that's kind of shallow and around your body. If you tend to hit the ball toward the toe of your club, or slice the ball to the right, or pop it up and make a lot of marks toward the top of your golf club, toward the top of your driver head, you're hitting down too steep, too choppy, and going underneath the golf ball. And natural instinct tells you to tee the ball lower if you're popping it up, but you actually want to do the opposite. You want to tee it up really, really high, and then tilt your upper body a little bit to the right, if you're a right-handed golfer, a little bit behind the golf ball, and then focus on swinging more around your body on a more rounded, flat, shallow swing arc. So that you feel like you're hitting the golf ball on the upswing instead of on the downswing. When you chop down too steep at it and hit underneath the ball, that's what's causing that contact high up on the face and causing you to pop it up into the air. It's another thing that will cause if you don't pop it up is it will tend to make hit the ball uh, with a slice to the right. As you hit down and chop across it, the face tends to stay open. You get a lot of left to right spin on the ball, and the ball is going to curve to the right. So you want to work on swinging more around your body on a flatter plane with a little bit of spine tilt away from the target. Try to swing up and to the right so it feels like you're kind of hitting up to the right, and that will help rotate the club face over and get the club face to close so you eliminate that slice and the popped up drive. Um, and also, again, from a club fitting standpoint, experiment with more loft on your driver, not less. Get more loft so you can hit the center of the club face on the back center of the golf ball, and the ball will actually take off lower than what you've been doing uh, with less spin, and you'll pick up a lot of extra distance. So a lot of times you need more loft, and you need a less choppy swing, and more around your body. All right, now, I've been doing some, some videos lately on the Mark of the Beast, and on FEMA camps, uh, and I want to elaborate on that a little bit more. Um, it may come as a surprise or a shock to a lot of you that um, our government, the DHS, has purchased... 30,000 guillotines, and there's a provision, uh, some legislation, and it's HB 1274, is the, is the legislation, HB 1274, and that is authorization to, for the government to use guillotines for, uh, to kill people. Well, you know, again, that doesn't really come as a shock to me, because the Bible says that's exactly what's going to happen in the last days. And as we've talked about before, there's going to be a final seven-year period of time called the Tribulation Period that starts with the signing of a peace treaty uh, between Israel and the Arab nations. And uh, that's going to be signed by the, the coming Antichrist. And then in the middle of that seven-year period, he is going to institute what's called the Mark of the Beast. And, and that is covered in, in uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 15, and it says, The second beast was given power to give breath to the image of the first beast, so that the image could speak and cause all who refused to worship the beast to be killed. It also forced all people, great and small, rich and poor, free and slave, to receive a mark on their right hands or on their foreheads, so that they could not buy or sell unless they had the mark, which is the name of the beast or the number of his name. 
This calls for wisdom. Let the person who has insight calculate the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man, and that number is 666. Everybody knows about the number 666, but people tend to not really think too much about it. It's not something they really think even they want to want, even believe in, or two want to think about. But <clears throat> world events dictate that that is really going to happen, and probably more soon than most people realize. <clears throat> now, if you do not get that mark of the beast, and, and as I was saying, the uh, Obamacare bill has a provision in it that by 2017, everybody needs to have a RFID chip implanted into their right hand. And eventually that would have all of you, not just your health records on it, but it'll also have all of your financial records and everything else. And that way you can't buy or sell unless you have that chip to scan at the store. So uh, Revelation chapter 6 verse 9 talks about the martyrs that, that will happen because Hopefully, if you're around on this planet at the time of the Mark of the Beast, you will not accept it. Because if you do accept it, you lose your soul. If you don't accept it, there's a chance you may be beheaded. Chapter uh, 6, verse 9 of Revelation says, When he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the souls of those who had been slain because of the word of God and had the testimony that they had maintained. They called out in a loud voice, how long, Sovereign Lord, holy and true, until you judge the inhabitants of the earth and avenge our blood? And each of them is given a white robe and told that to wait a little longer until the full number of their fellow servants, their brothers and sisters, were killed, just as they had been. Take that over to Revelation chapter 14. And it says, A third angel followed them, and said in a loud voice, If anyone worships the beast and its image, and receives its mark on their forehead or in their hand, they too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been pure, poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb, and the smoke of their torment will rise forever and ever. There will be no rest day or night for those who worship the beast and its image or for anyone who receives the mark of its name. This calls for patient endurance on the part of the people of God who keep his commands and remain faithful to Jesus. I don't know about you, but if it comes down to it, I'd much rather have my head chopped off than lose my soul and burn in eternal fire. And uh, like I said, world events are showing that those days are coming and they're coming a lot faster than you think. One more scripture I want to go over. And that is Revelation chapter 20, verse 4. And it says, I saw thrones on which were seated those who had been given authority to judge. And I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of the word of God. They had not worshipped the beast or its image and had not received its mark on their foreheads or in their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Again, there it is, beheaded for your testimony of, of God. We're seeing every single day we're losing our rights to speak out as Christians. The Department of Homeland Security now lists evangelical Christians as the number one threat to our national security. There will be a day when what I'm doing right here on the internet will be illegal. There will probably be a day where the government shuts down the internet so we can't do stuff like this. Those days are definitely coming. <clears throat> FEMA camps are open. FEMA camps are real. Look into this stuff. It's, it's true. As, as, as amazingly as it sounds, I know it's hard to believe. This stuff is absolutely real. And all of the signs are here. All the technology is here. And I would recommend that you go to YouTube and search FEMA guillotines, FEMA camps, FEMA coffins, and see this stuff for yourself. Our government has 30,000 guillotines just waiting to break them out on us. And I don't know. The rapture may happen at some point before that happens. And it may not. 
All I know is the Bible says no man knows the day or the hour except the Father. And we're told to watch and be ready. If you have Jesus in your heart, these days are the most exciting days in the history of the world to live in, I think. So much is happening so fast, I absolutely cannot keep up with it. But it sure is exciting trying to do it. So as these days are getting more evil, and we see all the signs happening, keep looking up. Pray that you're accounted worthy to escape all these things about to come to pass. Look up, your redemption is drawing near. Have a great night.